current is ripping through the high tide in the mangrove hammocks of Biscayne Bay and the sky is a million tiny vikings charging at me in a war horde. They're hitting me and falling in the ocean, one fat sea-bound teardrop at a time, smashing earth from Valhalla itself in the form of cold, wet rain. I'm in a vicious storm, 12-foot crashes threatening me with shark-faced boulders of coral rock and limestone, rocks that have killed unlucky sailors with impunity for centuries, leaving blood in their waves and a feast for creatures on the hunt. Actually, a couple hundred yards separate me from one of the most expensive zip codes in Miami-Dade County, but I'm in the wild, savage elements of ancient Florida at a tidal inlet through a mangrove hammock in Biscayne Bay, surrounded by the seagrass flats, sandbars, a natural shoal, and the last and largest public mangrove preserve in the region, which used to be the dominant feature of South Florida. The natural South Florida, that is. According to the National Park Service, Biscayne Bay is a shallow estuary. It is a place where fresh water from the mainland mixes with salt water from the sea. The bay serves as a nursery for marine life. This is the dichotomy underlying Greater Miami. Fresh and salt water in the brackish system, they form at their nexus. The interflow between the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Everglades. The underwater aquifer, a holy system of bedrock sharing natural springs and rainwater from Pensacola to Key West. And for the greater Miami metropolitan area, from Lake Okeechobee and Palm Beach County and Florida Bay to the south. The National Ocean Service says estuaries are some of the most productive ecosystems in the world. Many animal species rely on estuaries for food and as places to nest and breed. Of the 32 largest cities in the world, 22 are located on estuaries. Not surprisingly, human activities have led to a decline in the health of estuaries, making them one of the most threatened ecosystems on Earth. In the summer, it rains pretty much every day in Florida. And if you can't swim... Don't worry, the water right here is only waist to ankle deep. Sometimes even only toe deep. Sometimes it's just sand under your foot. My kayak floats across the surface like a car, hydroplane sliding on a rain slick highway. Only, there are no lanes and no speed limit. The ocean's tides are as unpredictable as all weather and can only be projected about a week in advance. Every six hours the tide goes in or out, converting the sea level as it has for thousands and maybe millions and maybe tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of years. I don't know. There's a high tide, a low tide, and the slack tide. That's kind of like an in-betweener. You can see which way it's running by the current on top of the water and which way the seaweed is floating. You can feel it in the visceral acceleration of a motor-free watercraft, such as this kayak I'm on. I'm in an eight-foot sit-on-top kayak, perfect for carving through the narrow mangroves. It has scupper holes that drain any water over the top of the boat. To get here, I park for free at the Chapman Field Park Public Kayak Launch and roll a half a mile to Hidden Lake and another half a mile through a hidden mangrove trail to Biscayne Bay. Paddling against the current is like climbing up a roller coaster, and paddling with the current is like swing down. The tunnel offers a nutrient-rich system constantly flushing itself with water, fish, and the fish that eat them. And you can see it happening all in real time right here. The birds here are fish-killing virtuosos. Winged beasts with razor-sharp binoculars, polarized cornea, and a specialized hook, scoop, and dagger faces perfectly adapted to the salty marsh and wetlands. There are raptors with legs as long as I-95, and claws like Nosferatu, the vampire, famous vampire. Everything is technicolor. A magical illusion of diffracting waves that telegraph false breaks in illusory landscapes. Perception is filtered through humidity. Beams of light shooting odd angles through the trees. Salt exposing fields of sunshine reflected like a mirror off the sea. And the ever-changing tides recurring morphology over terrestrial reality. Sound travels over water with great speed and volume further altering your perception. Pirates used to hide in these very mangroves and emerge from the shadows to wreck enemy ships for filthy lucre, rum, and gold. Dropping sails and creeping through the seagrass, one could tie off and remain obscured like any of the many predators throughout the chain of sea life here. Tequesta Indians, the pre-Columbian Florida natives indigenous to Greater Miami, built shell mounds and villages here. They ran with bobcats and swam with whales. They fished and hunted and feasted and partied right here. Evidence of their tradition and culture in the form of art and tools can still be found in these waters. Just look around. The magnetic draw of history suffuses the atmosphere. 
European explorers made landfall here, drank from natural freshwater springs and scoched in the porous limestone aquifer. The U.S. Army failed in multiple wars against the Miccosukee and Seminoles who were tribes of Georgia and North Carolina Creek banded with Cherokee, African Americans, other outlaws of the bloodthirsty American government. Trade and travel between the modern-day nations, the Bahamas, Cuba, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic formed the Caribbean Silk Road of sorts. Even ancient Aztecs and Mayans crossed from the Gulf Coast edges to throw down in South Florida. In the 1800s, a Standard Oil billionaire with an eye for change decided to build a railroad, and that was the start of modern-day Miami. A poet named George Merrick inherited hundreds of acres of raw land from his father and decided to blast his profile into the coastline with dynamite and call it Carl Gables. A hungry dredge carved the Venetian-style museum of canals into 40 miles of premium waterfront. I'm here with the baby sharks, tree crabs, and so many tiny ocean creatures learning about life in their sea nursery. Here where the tides enclose a trillion different creatures and where larger bodies find impenetrable thickets of interlocking roots chaotically woven through the salty sea. as a mangrove hammock. The mangrove is the only saltwater tree on earth. And the mud around it is a pungent funk of trapped carbon and vegetative death. Bacteria, hydrogen sulfide, rotten egg smell, fish eggs hatching. One goes out, another comes in. 360 degrees of microorganisms feasting on the flesh of terra not so firma. As the creatures grow, they edge closer and closer to the outside of the hammock, eventually setting in the territory below trees, walking roots, and either dying in the jaws of a predator or killing to appease their own endless gnawing hunger. Fishes, arthropods, mollusks, invertebrates, sharks, crabs, snails, crustaceans, mangrove snapper jack, pinfish, needlefish, grunts, typing puffers, and big, wily mangrove loving snook, manatees, a visual smorgasbord of the life aquatic. I make friends with a stingray. I got a moment of understanding with a puffer fish. I can tell it doesn't want to kill me because it doesn't expand itself into a neurotoxic balloon. Who will stop the rain? It's not a question. Here on surface level life, the golden star we spin around exerts a burning glow. That's the sun I'm talking about. The water is a window. The sandbar next to the seagrass. The denizens of these exotic climbs operate at high speed darting in zen-like flashes of direct impulse from sensory perceptions that we can't even imagine. They can feel our electromagnetic heartbeats and understand our tranquility or fear through minuscule vibrations. Traveling schoolfish with proto-meta collective consciousness throw their dice rolls for survival. Fish are smarter than we give them credit for, and we may be dumber than we think. A muscle-bound five-foot tarpon flies past me like a running back. Polarize your lenses, wear a hat, and keep your neck cool. Laffy taffy colored pair of fish eat algae and catch floating bits of coral in the current that they turn to sand through digestion and crap out for us to walk on. It's all here in the hammocks.